The Panthers are not having a good season. Just call a spade a spade. If it walks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it might be a duck. If you're not winning games, if your offense is struggling, if your defense is struggling, you might be having a bad season. But now I'm going to take it one step further. What are you doing about it? What are you doing to make sure it doesn't happen again next year? We know their season stinks. We know it must be hard. We know they're facing adversity. Let's jump to the second Dave Canales clip. Dave Canales, the head coach, was asked how he's handling adversity as a head coach. I mean, I've been through hard things in my personal life. I've been through hard things in my coaching career. Um, now as a head coach, you know, they're, um, I feel it heavier, but it's the same. You know, it's, it's, it requires a discipline, and it requires a gratitude and appreciation for what we get to do. And um, I think that might be a little bit of a shock to people, you know, as we, as we, you know, trying to find our way to, to play really good football um, and that it, it's not happening in all of our areas to, to come back every Wednesday and go, here we go. We're going to get another opportunity. We got 10 more of these. They're going to keep coming. And this is the greatest day we have to go attack it, to attack it with energy and with the mentality to just continue to improve our football. And so um, it's a great opportunity for all of us to just have that discipline, that, that mental discipline and emotional discipline to go right back to work because it's a great situation for us to come and to do what we love to do. A great situation, maybe a little over the top. It's a situation to come do what you want to do. I don't know. It's a great situation. Um, here's the thing. Their season's tough. They're facing adversity. In that locker room, with that coaching staff and those players, they're doing everything they can to turn it around. That's all you can do. But what is the front office doing? I got some numbers for you. There are 11 teams with one or two wins this season. That's That actually should be encouraging to the Panthers, right? You... You get lost in your bubble of just thinking how bad your team is. You don't realize there are 10 teams that are within one game as bad as you. One or two wins. 11 teams. Now, if you take out Miami and the Jets, because I <laughs> nobody tell them they're, they're one of those 11 because they still think they're good. If you take out Miami and the Jets, there are nine teams left. Three of them have used... They're veteran wide receivers to get better for next year. Cleveland traded Amari Cooper. Tennessee traded DeAndre Hopkins. Vegas traded DeAndre, or sorry, Devontae Adams. They are better now for next season and have a jump start on next year over the Panthers. What have the Panthers done to get better for next year? The, the biggest move they made was switch from a Second-year quarterback to a 36-, 37-year-old quarterback. That's not helping next year. I talk about this with the Panthers all the time, where they cannot waste, they cannot miss opportunities to get better no matter the increment. If they can get .01% better today, they can't afford to not because they have to catch up to everybody else. You go look at all the power rankings, they're dead last. They have to catch up. They need their roster to get better. They drafted bad for about five years, and they have to make up all of that ground. The Chiefs, the Bills, they were top contenders. They needed a wide receiver. Those spots are filled. Panthers could have could have pounced on that. Now, if, if it just so happens that Dan Morgan was in those negotiations and he was trying to sell him Deontay Johnson and they chose Amari Cooper and they chose um, DeAndre Hopkins over that, fine, right? If that's the case, take everything I'm saying and go, tough break, kid. But I have a hard time believing you would want the 33-year-old De DeAndre Hopkins over a 26, 27-year-old Deontay Johnson for roughly the same amount of money. And I better hear that the Panthers are willing to take on salary cap this season to get a better pick next year. Uh, because what are you saving for this year? Saving that money for someone special? Of the nine teams who are bad and think they're bad, they're starting to get better for the future. They're starting to think about that, and the Panthers need to or they'll get left behind. Miles Sanders isn't enough. Miles Sanders is the only one that anyone is willing to mention like might be in a trade conversation. Now, sure, if you can get something for Miles Sanders, of course you do it, but that's not going to get it done. You're going you're gonna to have to move on from someone you think is good. 
because of situation. This this isn't you know uh, high school football or fantasy football where it's like no I don't cut good players. It's it's NFL football where you have to look at the full chessboard, see the impact of it, see what's going to happen two three steps down the line. Deontay Johnson is going to say he wants to be here because he's not a not a dummy, right? Why would he take away a team that could bid for his services this off season? He's going to say he loves everything about Carolina. My guess is he's gone. My guess is he wants to play with a more established quarterback. My guess is he may even want money that the Panthers can't offer. $30 million a year, $28 million a year, something along those lines. Will he get it? I don't think he's worth it. But that hasn't stopped anyone from asking in the past. When you see these moves being made, and, and for like whatever, 72 hours there, felt like there was a, a big wide receiver trade every day. You just woke up and there's a new one. Now there's reports that Cooper Cup tonight on Thursday Night Football for the Rams is basically out there on like a uh, audition. Like it's like it's an auction, and they're going to rev the engine as they drive him up to the, the stage, let him go show that he's healthy, make 10 catches, and then have him traded by Sunday. which would be another example of how waiting would have cost the Panthers something because you trade Deontay Johnson last week, Cooper Cup isn't even in the mix because he's not healthy, no one's going to trade for a hurt wide receiver. You trade Deontay Johnson next week or you try to trade Adam Thielen next week or Deontay Johnson next week, they might go, "Eh, no, we're going to try to go for Cooper Cup. Timing is everything. Dave Canales and, and the players, yeah, it's all about Denver. Go focus on Denver. What are you going to do to stop Bo Nix? What are you going to do to uh, you know, get Jatavian Sanders open in the end zone? That's what you worry about. Front office, it's the 2024-2025 NFL season already for you. You're a one-win team. How do you not make that your fate next year is what the, the front office is thinking about. If I walk into Dan Morgan's office and I see a whiteboard with magnets in the form of a depth chart, names on it, right, in positions, and it has this year's depth chart, I'm confused. I'm going, well, yeah, we we know that. Can't really change that. Put next year's depth, depth chart up there and put everyone on an expiring deal at the bottom, and they don't get a spot in the depth chart until you lock them in for next year. And have a few of those little name chat tags that are blank, but you can write on them with a dry erase marker and write in there, Justin Fields and, and be ready to erase it and write in there, Shador Sanders and be ready to erase it and look at what you can do because for the front office as the, the, the Browns, the Titans and the Raiders are already proven front offices have to be into next year. As Tennessee trots out Mason Rudolph, you don't think he would like to have Deandre Hopkins out there? Darn right Mason Rudolph would love to have DeAndre Hopkins out there. Instead, guess where those jump balls are going? Tyler Boyd. Like, it's 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 a different beast for him. But they're not worried about Mason Rudolph this year. They're worried about not being one of the worst teams in the league next year. Because at some point, you got to turn the page. 